Welcome to our new series on 5G, the catalyst of enterprise transformation, where, together with a leading communications service provider, we will explore how service providers are using 5G to transform the future of business. In this series, we will expose real-world use cases to showcase how 5G is transforming industries and enabling new business. My first guest on the series, I'm delighted to introduce, is Nikos Katinakis, Head of Group IT and Networks at Telstra. Welcome, Nikos. It's great to be here, Jan. Nice to see you and nice to see everybody. Welcome. So, for the benefit of the audience, it would be really good to start with a background on Telstra. And you are really, in the industry, a front-runner with 5G. You've been live, I think, with 5G for almost two years. Can you share some highlights, please, Nikos? Absolutely. Uh 5G is one of those transformative technologies that we really wanted to be at the front end of, of uh, the, the deployment cycle. So when uh, we had the opportunity to step on the gas, we stepped on it and we haven't let go. A uh, good example is by end of this June, we are going to have 75% POPs covered across Australia. And given the size of the country, you can imagine how good of a task that has been. Yeah. And the reason why we did that, Jan, is because we felt that for the first time, devices and networks were hitting the market at about the same time. And we wanted people that were buying their new exciting phones with 5G capability to open the box and really be ready to work in a beautiful 5G network. Mm. So the topic is a little bit focused on enterprise here. So imagine we had a chair in this room and we had an enterprise customer sitting on that chair. What do you think that enterprise customer, how would that enterprise customer describe their needs, do you think, Nikos? Well, first of all, I think we have to say that we're all discovering those needs and we're trying to map them to the capabilities of the technology. Um, it's, it's, and it's a, an exciting discovery journey. But the early days and what we're hearing from our customers and what we're trying to deliver to them are the following. One, is how do you take the capability that the 5G core has, slicing and all these things, and deliver a very different but predictable experience to all the customers? Fantastic stuff. Number two, given the speeds and the capabilities we're talking about, what can you enable if you combine it with edge compute uh, to to create new technological capabilities that drive business outcomes. I'll give you examples. Um, infrastructure free branch. So do we really need to have all these wires and expensive laptops and in every small office uh, or small branch or whatever around the country? Probably not. We can, we can enable uh, the same experience for the people that work on those small offices or small branches without that infrastructure. So draw, uh, lowering the cost, driving performance. Uh, what about video analytics? Uh, great opportunity, whether it's uh, you know face recognition for a security application at an airport mm -hmm. or using video analytics as a quality control in, uh, in an environment like a mine or uh, a factory or whatever. Yeah. And finally, private networks. Um, what a great opportunity now to take 4G private networks and elevate them to the next level of capability, uh, whether again it's to run a mine or run a port or an airport or whatever. So er early days, we're all discovering, but you can easily see all these things emerging and we're starting to deploy as we speak. Thank, thanks for sharing. So you have first-hand experience of 5G and you're a leading provider already for the enterprise market. How would you describe the opportunity from a CSP point of view with 5G to serve the enterprises? By CSP, I'm assuming, Jan, you... you communications. Cloud service no, provider. communication service provider. Yeah. Communication service provider. Yeah. Just, just to make sure the acronyms are all aligned. <laughs> yeah. um, 
So communi- a, 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 a telco, a, a CSP Correct. like ourselves. Correct. Um, the opportunity that comes with it is that we can now elevate ourselves behind, uh, beyond connectivity. Uh, of course, we continue to sell fiber and MPLS and SD1 and all these things. But now we can take this game and elevate it to a very different level. Uh, one thing that we have all learned is that resiliency of the network is super important. And that is a foundational expectation now of everybody. Even though they don't think about it, our customers don't think about it, it's an expectation. It's embedded in everything we do. So these capabilities now allow us to deliver a more resilient network that has the ability to uh, manage workloads, orchestrate failovers, manage capacity in a lot more intelligent fashion, combine access networks to make it access agnostic for the customer. And of course, on top of that, you can layer all the other applications that are enabled that that I, I just spoke before about whether it's video analytics or AR, VR or anything you want. Thanks a lot. So recently, Telstra and Ericsson announced uh, a cooperation in building edge cloud solutions for enterprises, building on work we've done together for an Australian financial institution. Would you mind sharing some other examples, use cases that you see? That was, first of all, Jan, a super exciting project and continues to be exciting because you start seeing the applications not only for a particular customer, but you can see them how they could apply to whole industries. Um, other examples that we see uh, emerging and we're starting to work together, uh, taking the capability of a cradle point, yeah. uh, great device that you basically can install in a- anywhere, and now you can make any connectivity access agnostic. So that's that's an early uh, development that we're working together. Uh, if you allow me, I'm going to call it uh, um, SD1 over 5G, but yeah. what it means really is orchestrate the access uh, between a fixed connection and a wireless connection. You can use one as primary, the other one as a fallback if something goes wrong. Yeah. The evolution of that, uh, once the connectivity is done, now you can talk about edge applications. So uh, you can take workloads from the appli- from the enterprise and put them next to the network and Okay, low latency, we've talked about it. Um, Bigger bandwidth, avoid transferring data back and forth. Mm. And and now you're talking about the applications that uh, uh, I I just mentioned. We are specifically excited about the following. Mining, Mm -hmm. uh, super big uh, in Australia and tremendous amount of opportunities uh, to help mining companies evolve and create more efficient operations. Um, uh, infrastructure, um, free branches. So this is a financial institution, but expanding it to every other uh, similar customer. Mm -hmm. And number three, supply chain uh, and and food uh, security. So you can imagine transportation, uh, things like that. So that's uh, our next target. And finally, we see a tremendous opportunity around education and government services. Thanks a lot. So we talk a lot about the opportunity. What would you say are the key capabilities that the communication service provider needs to put in place in order to capitalize on that opportunity? There are a couple of uh, important blocks. One is uh, to set up the 5G core to be able to do uh, slicing and all these good things. Uh, so that, that's very important. And for us, we have chosen to go down the path of a dual 4G, 5G core that enables efficiencies and, of course, uh, use these capabilities uh, across everything. Number two, I think you have, uh, as a service provider, you have to select all the sites you're going to deploy uh, cloud infrastructure at the edge. Mm-hmm. and work to derive a few things out of that. So in other words, what's going to be at the network edge and what's going to be at the customer edge. Number three, to have a good partner like an Ericsson 
so you can do the orchestration. Um, and orchestration doesn't mean only service on a private cloud. It means how do you manage workloads across the private cloud at the edge and the public cloud at the edge so you can enable these capabilities that we spoke about, resiliency, et cetera. Um, once that's done, then you have a pretty exciting set of capabilities that uh, you can serve pretty much every industry uh, at that point. Fantastic. So expanding on a, on a particular angle, the cooperation between communication service providers and the hyperscalers, how, what key recommendations you would have to the industry and to other communication service providers. How should a communication service provider plan the engagement with hyperscale cloud providers? Jan, it's a, it's a great strategic question for all of us. Um, what has become clear to ourselves is that we have to win as an ecosystem of partners. Mm. Uh, the capabilities we're talking about cannot be delivered by a single entity alone. There is no CSP out there that can solve every problem. There is no hyperscaler that can solve every problem. Mm. There is no systems integrator that can solve every problem. So it's quite important that these ecosystem partnerships create those solutions that help the customers address their business needs. In our case, we feel very, very strongly that the ecosystem contains, of course, ourselves, the CSP, contains somebody like an Ericsson, because they, you guys bring great technology solutions and brings one or more of the hyperscaler uh, providers. And that's the core of the ecosystem. You can bring other entities in, maybe a device vendor, uh, maybe a systems integrator, maybe an application provider, because again, none of us have all the answers. But that core, those three entities, I feel it's super important for all of us to have these partnerships and, and very strong go-to-market models. Thank you so much, Nikos, for sharing this experience with us. Jan, it's a pleasure. To wrap up, it's very exciting to be at the cusp of the 5G-led enterprise transformation. And it's so good to see how we can drive forward innovation and industry transformation. And as Nikos just shared with us, it's really critical that we work as an ecosystem to work together to share learnings with each other. So please join me in this series as we will share more use cases, more learnings. Thank you so much. <laughs>